History is such a fickle thing. And it seems when it comes to the world of history, and I'm going to call it that intentionally, we have two types of people out there. We have those who wish historical revisionism to change the things that we know happened and try to say that they did not in fact happen. And then on the other side of the coin, we seem to have others out there who say, we know all that there is to know about history and never shall we question what happened, entirely removing the scientific method from the things that we know. Well, the man who has been challenging this idea, specifically the second one, since about 95 when his first book came out, if I am correct, no, I have not read it. Graham Hancock gets a Netflix series called Ancient Apocalypse. Now, after being a fan favorite, he and Randall Carlson, on the Joe Rogan podcast since I believe about 2012, maybe, was when their first appearance was. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments down below. They have seen wide, wide popularity throughout a lot of the world. There are people who have been following this stuff for a long time and people who haven't. Conspiracy theorists, amateur archaeologists, amateur geologists, and overall just amateur history buffs. The people who look into the past and go, do we really know what happened? Is our account of history entirely correct? And for those out there who have been asking those questions, we have been sidelined and told, sit down, shut up, the science is settled, no questions needed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's topic discussing the ancient apocalypse, the brand new Netflix series, which I did actually watch eight episodes um, of it, which I think are all the episodes. But if I haven't seen all of it, let me know. Um, I don't think, but anyway. Let's get into. Over here from fizz.org. Never been to this website before in my life. Don't know if it's good. Don't know if it's bad, but we're going to find out together. Over here at fizz.org with Netflix's ancient apocalypse, Graham Hancock declares war on archaeologists. Um, Definitely using a salacious headline here to try to get the archaeological community in an uproar. All right. Netflix, enormously popular new show, Ancient Apocalypse, is an all-out attack on archaeologists. As an archaeologist uh, committed to public engagement who strongly believes in the relevance of studying ancient people, I feel a full-throated defense is necessary. Okay, so, which is fine. We are engaging in the scientific method right here. Author Graham Hancock is back. Uh, defending his well-trodden theory about an advanced global Ice Age civilization, which he connects in Ancient Apocalypse to the legend of Atlantis, his argument as laid out. Uh, he also connected it to not just the legend of Atlantis. He also connected it to, I don't know, the several hundred different peoples that were around all coming up with very similar myths very similar legends all dating back to thousands of years before what we know as mankind's civilized history okay he so right there there's some missing context it wasn't just about atlantis atlantis is used right there as a way to dismiss people right and we all know what it is it carries somewhat of a negative connotation today his argument is laid out in this show and in several books, is that this advanced civilization was destroyed in a cataclysmic flood. The survivors of this advanced civilization, according to Hancock, introduced agriculture, architecture, astronomy, arts, math, and knowledge of civilization to simple hunter-gatherers. The reason uh, little evidence exists, he says, is because it's under the sea or was destroyed by the cataclysm. Which would be a fair assessment to say. I mean, it has been widely thought that there have been multiple, I believe six or seven, extinction level events that have happened on the planet. But when it comes to talking about an extinction level event that could have almost wiped out humankind, it's preposterous to think about. And that is something that he somewhat brings up. We know that we've had a volatile major changes in the past of this planet in the 4.8 billion years old that the planet is. And the funny thing is, is that when it comes to our history, human history, well, it cannot happen because we are here. 
And that seems to be one of the biggest problems with the accepted ideas. Okay. <clears throat> Perhaps, Hancock posits in the first episode, the extremely defensive, arrogant, and patronizing attitude of mainstream academia is stopping us from considering that possibility. All right, the pseudo fish defense. So this is going to be a rather lengthy article. I'm not going to go over all of it. I'm not going to cover all of it. I obviously understand what they're going to, but let's go with this. Let's just go with this, just this first little paragraph here. In the opening dialogue of, or well, maybe a little more. In the opening dialogue, Ancient Apocalypse, Hancock rejects being identified as an archaeologist or scientist. Instead, he calls himself a journalist who is investigating human prehistory. A canny choice as the label journalist helps Hancock rebut being characterized as a pseudo-archaeologist or a pseudo-scientist, which, as uh, he puts it <clears throat> himself in episode four, would be like calling a dolphin a pseudo-fish. So here is the, uh, and he's never called himself an archaeologist or anything. He's curious about stuff. He goes, he talks with people who are, he, he's, he's seeing things and he goes, hmm. And so he goes and he talks with people and he writes about it, right? Finds sources, talks with his sources, and then writes about it, okay? Sounds like a journalist. And, and for years, I've even seen it on the Joe Rogan podcast. He has referred to himself as a journalist. It's not to shield him from anything. He's just being honest. He's like, look, I don't, I am not in this academia. I do not have the the accreditation from these mainstream, from these you know accepted, you know uh, accredited places, universities, things like that. He's like, I simply see things and I report on what I see and the findings that I have. That sounds like a journalist. From my perspective as an archaeologist, this show is surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, lacking in evidence to support Hancock's theory of an advanced global ice age civilization. Uh, the only uh, site Hancock visits that actually dates to near the end of the is Gobekli Tepe in modern Turkey. There were a few other examples that he gave where the bedrock and the base stone in that uh, uh, show were actually uh, before that. <clears throat> so, we know where this is going to go. Obviously, and I've read this stuff before, and I've actually seen documentaries that are counteract what Hancock is saying. They are out there. They're everywhere, right? In fact, they've been everywhere for the last, I don't know, since we've had television and documentaries became a thing to watch. Um, one of the things that I have wondered for many, many years, and it was when you realize that the biblical texts were passed down for generations prior to being written down, and we know that the Bible was written down, I believe the first iterations of it were written down somewhere about 7,000, 7 to 9,000 years ago, I believe. Um, it's been a while, uh, but we do know that oral tradition did predate the physical manifestation of the actual biblical texts. In addition to that, I also knew years ago that many, many different ancient religions and different, and well, some religions that are still alive today, but many different ancient religions and many different ancient societies all have flood stories, right? That would seem very strange. You would think, you would think of the idea of a flood story or a global cataclysm on that scale would be just nigh on impossible uh, if one, you know, civilization thought of it, but many of them. It is everywhere. It's all over the ancient world, going back as far as we have studied them. But for some reason, the possibility of the global flood, we said, well, we've never had evidence that a global flood exists, while archaeologists simultaneously also say that the sea walls rose 400 feet when the collapse of the great ice walls happened. So how can you simultaneously say on one hand, that there was no global flood, that this cataclysm could not have happened, because if you look at the time period that this was all written down, completely discounting the fact that they also know oral tradition was a thing and a very ritual tradition as well. It wasn't just you listening to me and going, no, it was studied for years. The exact words were said. You must say it exactly this way, right? So they, they go in, and generally in the arguments here, they completely discount 
the idea that one, the great ice walls collapse, saying that no global flood ever happened, which we know to be categorically false. It is scientifically proven that the sea walls rose about 400 feet. Something ridiculous, which when if water came up that fast, you can imagine that a lot of the areas out there that were coastal civilizations and coastal gatherings of people would probably be wiped out. The other thing that they completely neglect is that we have been here in our current form, in our current evolutionary state, for about 186,000 years, okay? Now, the, now, and a lot of people go, well, wait a minute, don't you believe in God? I do, and trust me, a lot of people might go, wait, 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 wait. just listen to me. We know that we've been here for about 186,000 years in our, in our bipedal form, and the preposterousness that we could not have simply had you know, people who knew how to build what would be probably closer to early, early, early Roman architecture, probably knew how to fish and hunt and maybe have some farms prior to when we saw them, right? We are, a, we are a blip from ancient history to now. It is a blip on the time scale that the humans have actually existed. So if you figure, let's wipe out the last 10,000 years. Let's just use that as a really nice round number, right? That puts us at 8,000 BC, okay? At 8,000 BC, we wipe all that out. 176,000 years predated that in the human condition. And the idea that nothing, no civilization, no agriculture could have possibly existed prior to that, even though there were several cataclysms, some are larger, some smaller, obviously the global, the global flood that happened during the ice, during the collapse of the great ice walls, all of this is discounted in the modern academia. This is something that people and the idea that you cannot you cannot one be religious and believe that time is keep in mind modern academia and the academia of the time has convinced the religious community that the world is only a certain age. Go act, go back and look at where that all came from. Okay? And when you look at where that all came from, you start to piece together that academia has shifted the narrative for the last 150 years. Right? And in fact, in the early, about 100 years ago, when they tried going back even further, well, the powers that be at the time decided to snuff that out because it would have discredited those who were making quite a lot of money at the time. So for those of you out there who have checked out Ancient Apocalypse and have seen it, what are your thoughts on the show itself? I think I've shared mine here fairly well. I think the possibility is more probable than not that when the ice walls collapsed and all of the water that was being held back by them and the sea walls rose 40 feet, I believe that that is the mark of the global flood. I believe that is what we read in the Bible and many other many other traditions and civilizations around the world. I think that that is the moment in time. We also hear... <clears throat> excuse me, in ancient apocalypse that there are structures out there that were built prior to anything that we have found previously. Gobek Latepe being one of them, other monolithic structures as well. So the idea that history only began about 10,000 years ago, even though we know that our species is 176,000 years older than that in our current evolutionary state, it would be preposterous to believe that some people couldn't have stacked some bricks on some bricks, made some houses, and possibly had a farm before then. And you say, well, why don't we see them? Well, I would imagine when the seawalls rose, and most people at the time would want to have water access. In fact, we see primitive cultures, primitive civilizations out there decide that, well, if we want to make sure that our crops can grow, we need to be the place where the water is. And ergo, you live by the water. So putting all these puzzle pieces together that the mainstream recognizes and understands, but then they throw them aside to make sure that they say, uh-uh, nope, we're the ones making money and you're threatening that. Always understand, people, this is something that it threatens their money, it threatens their power, and it threatens their ability 
to control the narrative. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know if you guys think I'm whack, if I'm not whack, love it or hate it. I go and I read all of your comments on my Sunday live stream called Sunday Coffee because I make sure that if you guys are down there, you're dedicating time to watching this video and you're dedicating time to hanging out with me. I want to make sure that I dedicate time to you guys. So join me for Sunday Coffee on Sundays and also never forget to join me on Friday nights for Iron Age Nights where we highlight the Iron Age creators. We highlight the people who are out there writing their own stories and getting away from the corporate mainstream. They're writing their own stories. They believe in good storytelling once again, and the cultural movement is happening. So join me on Friday night at 8 p.m. Central and on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central to make sure that you guys keep up with everything that I'm doing. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe, like the video, and cheers. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.